it's just going to seep in and it's going to corrupt the body of this woman that I love. So it just almost in like a cinematic fury, he wakes up and he goes to the, to the funeral parlor and the cemetery and says, dig her up. I need her. I need this body to come out of the ground because I'm sure it's going to be damaged by the, by the uh, low level and by the uh, heavy rains. And they sure. were like, well, and, and as you might imagine, they were like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. sure, whatever. Sure. Yeah, why not? Whatever oh, floats your boat there, man. A- anything else? Can we do anything else for you? <laughs> anyway, right. Is there a dog you want to bear, dig yeah. up? Yeah. Or... <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if they ever heard this coming from his room when he was thinking about her. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help. The Frankenstein <laughs> no, reference. But, so, but not only do they acquiesce to his um, demand to dig her up, but they put him, this radiologist, in charge of her reinterment. <laughs> and he's, so he's now the doctor or the, the mortician who's in charge of taking her body out, readjusting it. And at the same time, he's building this crypt for her on a plot of land in the cemetery that he's bought. So madness is just about. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I mean, madness has run amok at this point, And yes. her poor family is probably counting the money. Yeah, look at that. He's giving us some mad money here to, just to be able to hang out our daughter. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil the goods for him and tell him she's dead. All right. Totally. It's craziness. So now they have funeral number two, where now she's okay. Now she's out of the ground, but he describes it in the journal of, you know, if they'd only done what he asked. He wanted them to embalm the coffin. Now that doesn't mean anything to any mortician that I've talked to to embalm. Yeah, on um, the coffin. That would make but no sense. Journal, no, <laughs> well, I guess to keep the bugs out or whatever. So, but it... he, he's talking about like the damage to her body, and it's not her fault, and it's certainly not his fault. It's the it's it's everyone else's fault, and there's no reason she should be in this state. <laughs> well, thank God her family didn't offer cremation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he God, really would have right. been screwed. <laughs> well, now they have funeral number two. They put her in this really thoroughly locked up uh, crypt that's above sea level now because it's above ground. And it's if you, I think you've seen the pictures, uh, certainly, of her mausoleum. And it's like a sure. house, uh, you know, like almost like a postmodern house, which he visits nightly, you know, and, and daily. And God, no, I, I always kind of question, is he getting any work done at this point? Well, I, I'd start to, you know, I imagine the people that are viewing him coming and going must have thought, wow, that guy has really flipped his cookies. Yeah, I well, mean, he it, was, the, the, chil, the children would harass him. And he writes about that in his, uh, in his journal that, you know, because it, it's always children who see more than adults. Oh, do. sure, sure. Wow, so this guy's <laughs> nuts. Yeah, he's he's a little <laughs> on the deep end. I may there. be a kid, but he's crazy. <laughs> right, they're throwing rocks at him, and he's like, "If they only, if they only knew the love that we have for Get each other." Get off my lawn, you kids! <laughs> Get off my cemetery! Get off my tombstone! <laughs> you damn little whippersnappers! But so here's where it gets really sadistic. Oh boy, we haven't gotten that part yet. <laughs> yeah, we've not got to sadism yet. Um, we will get but, there. We, we'll save that for after the break. If that's cool. So far. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah um, exactly. it really, it's a love story. It's a, it's a modern love story at this point. <laughs> I, I think we're laughing a lot and we're, we're having a big joke, but I, I do think stripping away the layers, it is. I I, I do. I, I in my heart, and I want to believe that it is. Uh, as, as a lot of people, I think, at the time did. But he um, he does begin to communicate telepathically with this body. He's been kind of talking, and there's suggestion that he puts a telephone. We're going to uh, take a break here quick before we take that okay. letter. wonderful, wonderful story. No, I'm just kidding. It's almost, about, ew, icky, 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 icky uh, corpsey stuff. But uh, I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me. Eric Necrophilia. Oh, I know. That's exactly what it is. And we are talking to Ronnie, Ronnie Thomas today. And, we're, and he is going to be making a film all about, well, basically, Carl Tanzler, or a.k.a. Count Van, Carl Von Kozel, right? Kozel or is it Castle? Kozel. Ah, okay. don't, don't get the key right. Okay, we, we, we got... before, before we return <laughs> to this riveting, and boy, oh boy, it is riveting. Well, we have, a caller, we have a caller on the horn. Hello, caller. 
<laughs> How are you? Hello. Hello. I'm I'm Jeff. Hi, can you hear me? I'm. Uh, Is this I'm Elena? I am. No, I, it's a it's a person, and I'm uh, I'm disguising my voice. Oh, I couldn't uh, tell. We couldn't tell that. Um. Yes, I'm a, a long time listener, first time caller. Um. <laughs> Uh, very interested you, in um uh, you sound like Rocky um, Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, be nice to uh, our caller. I, I'm, I'm, well, I could deepen it a little bit, but uh, I just don't want anybody to know um my. I want people to know my story, but not know who I am. Well, sure, uh, sure. Um, but I, I am. Uh, yes, I I've been a fan of this um, uh, Cosell story for quite some time, and um. As a young boy, I um, I actually fell in love with the corpse myself. <laughs> um, I hear she gets around. Yes, um, no, I, my father. Different. Yes, my father worked in a funeral home, and um, late uh, one night, I did. I did that's how it um, starts. I, yes, <laughs> um, and there was a woman there, and I was a young boy. Okay, and, keep a PG, keep a PG. We know that you got fire I going was, on in the pants, no, but. We didn't all the way. Well, that's good to know. You respected her enough. I did respect her. Um, so I just, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm a big fan. I really, uh, I would have loved to see this film get made because I do think that there can be love between uh, the living and the dead. And, Cross um, that veil. <laughs> sure. <Yes>. Sure. Termites. <laughs> love, you know. love never dies. And, no, um, God. I, Love is never I, having to say you're a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is quite fun. Yes. Um, so, oh oh my God. God. <laughs> uh, I, you think I'm kidding around, but the, I, no, I am don't. not. No. Don't kill um, me. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, um, yes, I, I'm a big fan, and I, I really, I'm really, uh, I'm very impressed that this, this film is finally being made. The story is being told. Sure. Um, now, now, I had a question for uh, 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 Ronnie Thomas. Oh, God, kill me. Oh, um, <laughs> let her now, rip, caller. Let her rip. Now, uh, now there are there are rumors that uh, Coso uh, puts a tube inside <laughs> okay. of. Uh, Oh, this again. <laughs> and um, okay. do you know if that's if that's true? Can you do that? Can you do that? <laughs> well, I, I, can. I, I personally can't. No. <laughs> well, caller, thank you for I calling in. Collective you. And, and then yes. we're okay. we're gonna we're gonna let very you go. Excited. Very excited. You keep doing this. Can please kickstart this project. Absolutely, everybody. absolutely. I'm one hundred percent behind it. <laughs> And Thank I you. want to be 100 percent behind the course right now. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, thank you for calling. And a hey, great segue. <laughs> Let's remind everyone about that Kickstarter campaign. And you simply go to Kickstarter, and then the name of the film is "No Place for the Living: The Mad Story of Carl von Kossel." And everyone wants to say Cosell, but it has nothing to do with Howard. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing thing. All right, back to you, Ronnie. That was a that was, that was amusing, good. if if insane interlude, but it's <laughs> utterly appropriate. Is that the typical call you guys get? <laughs> not show? not typically. I mean, oh, you know, we, this individual sounds a lot like Grover from, yeah, <laughs> from, from Sesame we have Street. Rocky the Squirrel Necrophiliac call in. Sure, <laughs> not every day. <laughs> I want the support of Grover. It's a puppet movie. So, so anyway. <laughs> Elmo's going to call in next saying, I want to play the part of Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had any kind of fun in acting in a very long time. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's get to the serious matter yes. of sadism. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, so <laughs> we left off, I think, where you know they, they've decided to... Cos- oh God! The keyword people are going to kill me. Castle, not yes. Cos- yeah. Castle. No. Castle. <laughs> um, and it, it's it's mainly in his mind, Elena, who needs to leave the cemetery. She's made friends with 
her neighbors. And this is all in his journal. And he's not uh, going to put up with that, gosh darn it. He's sick of that. They, they just keep <laughs> crashing the party. Yeah. They're, just, they're wayward spirits, you know. So they, she's made friends with all the people in December. So he's naturally against this idea, which indicates that he isn't insane. So, and he's saying like, no, 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 we can't do this. I'll be caught. They'll never understand. They don't get it. And they, re- referring to normal human beings. The they world. The world, right? The world around us. And yet he's oddly, ironically wrong, but uh, when he when he kind of says that, but we'll get to that later. Sure. Uh, but so she's like, no, 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 don't worry about it. My my neighbors have kind of offered to help, you know, the woman next to me. The dead neighbors. Uh, yeah, the dead neighbors okay. the people in the cemetery. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Yeah, no, what no, a no. lively group there for a cemetery. I suppose, I suppose it's worth clarifying. The dead neighbors. <laughs> They've all decided, okay, let's uh, let's help Elena out. She wants out. I get it. She wants to be back with um, with with Carl, you know. Um, the Count. So, the Count. Who wouldn't want to be? So and he, so he's still living at, in her bedroom, but it, I, I guess it's kind of coming to a point where he realizes the two of them should make this legit. So she apparently tells him about a house near the cemetery that is abandoned up so, for rent. So, okay, make this legit, like, as in make an honest woman out of this corpse? Make an honest corpse out of this woman. Or whatever, yeah. Sure, okay, okay, okay <laughs> I get you now. Like, as in wedding bells. <laughs> wedding, well, absolutely. So, when he goes about doing this, he describes this Red Rider uh, wagon that he buys to support the corpse. Now, the, the it gets really wacky here because I don't actually know how this could have happened because this indicates something supernatural. You know, it, there's she's in this crypt. It's not exactly an easy thing to pull off to go to a cemetery, even in 1930s, when there is no street lamps, really, you know, powerful lighting. Sure. How does the, how how this is accomplished if it indeed is even accomplished as evidence to maybe suggest that when he had dug her up in the first place, she never made it into the crypt. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so he gets her out of the cemetery going, you're too good for this. And the neighbors help her out to get yeah. out of the cemetery, oddly enough. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's what he describes as this kind of, it's where the title, no place for, for no place for the living comes from. Okay. And um, he, in the journal, he says, this was indeed no place for the living on this darkest of nights. And he describes it as this not funeral procession, this marriage ceremony, and the the, the um, spirits of the cemetery had come to life, oh. and they never experienced such a joyous occasion, this reunion of these two people. So, um, but he's in reality wheeling her on this chi- children's red red rider wagon with her kind of decomposing corpse. He didn't have spring. He didn't spring. <laughs> kind of hand hanging drunk. over it, I would think. <laughs> No, no, no. She's bouncing she... off the sidewalk. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thump, yeah, thump, thump, thump. But it's, no, it's not even the sidewalk. It's it's the dirt of the cemetery. So uh-huh. yeah, she's just kind of like dragging bubble. along. Yeah. Unless he folded all... her up or something. Oh my god, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put myself well, there. Well, I think it's important to rem- uh, or at Rejected. least add that he did have a death mask made of her, but that'll come in later, I'm sure, into the story. Okay, well, so that's the very end, yeah, sure. But yeah, he so, he gets he gets her home. They have the wedding. Everyone's all happy. He, you know, he brings her home the Red Rider wagon. Hey, look at we're home, honey. And right, he carries right. her over the threshold. Everyone's happy. Okay, yeah, and that's actually how he describes it: is carrying her over the threshold into this temporary living space in this abandoned house near the cemetery. And who does he enlist to help him move the? body into this house that he finds on the beach the dead people not even worse even more sadistic her, her family. family oh my lord he gets the family to help her move so her the... family and he says it in the journal would they know that their beloved daughter is not is in the back of this makeshift airplane oh. that he's trying to build to fly to the seven seas with her you gotta be kidding me they didn't know i mean they hadn't no, known. Well, they didn't know they were moving their own daughter. The brother-in-law showed up and is asked to move this coffin. 
<laughs> and he's like, well, why a coffin? He's like, oh, I just use it for sp- spare, um, spare, spare, spare parts. Spare I parts. keep my tools in it. <laughs>